Yes, I can understand you. I'm Leonard Nimoy. Interesting. A record player that produces beautiful sound and pictures through my TV. A few months ago, I got it into my head to finally attach an external CD-ROM drive to one of my Amiga 3000s. I've used a PsyQuest drive and an iOmega Zip 100 with Amiga computers, and frankly, I love those old-school mass storage options. But the allure of a quiet CD-ROM drive for file storage, backups, mod file playback, and even just listening to music CDs, of which I have stacks begging for use, was beyond compelling. It became a siren song. After a lot of looking and research, I landed on the beautiful Apple CD 300E+. There are a ton of external SCSI CD-ROM drive options out there. For example, I have a friend with a gorgeous external SCSI drive made by Sun Microsystems, and others who use Atapi drives. The Apple CD drive I found looks virtually brand new and unused. It is built like a tank with a painted metal case that nearly matches my 3000's case and front fascia. The Apple CD is just slightly lighter in hue. My unit was manufactured in December of 1994. The 300E Plus was the last 2x speed external CD-ROM drive Apple produced before moving on to 4x. To use the drive, I needed to acquire the following hardware. I needed a data cable. I got a three foot DB25 mail to Centronics 50 pen mail SCSI cable. I also needed what's called a SCSI terminator. I went with a really nice granite digital gold SCSI 50 pen external active terminator. It's a really nice build, it was around 20 bucks and that included free shipping as well. The Amiga 3000 and all of its older siblings are fully SCSI capable out of the box, so from a hardware perspective this was plug and play. The front panel includes an eject button, LED light with two LED colors, green for power and amber for activity, a headphone jack with volume control dial, and a motorized CD tray that can eject or engage with the tap of a button. Even the soft nudge of one's finger on the open tray will close it automatically. No flimsy disc caddies for this drive, no sir. The original Apple CD300 drive was in fact a caddy load model, harkening back to the earliest consumer CD-ROM days. I'm looking at you, CDTV. And to be fair, the CDTV came out in 1991, and caddy loaders were typical then, so you have to give it a pass. Of course, like most tray loading computer CD and DVD drives, there's also a tiny little hole on the front face to force eject a disc that doesn't want to come out. The way to do this is with a straightened paper clip. Press it firmly into the tiny little hole when the power is off, and the drive door mechanism should open and pop out its CD tray. It also has a nice little trap door to protect against dust. On the back of the drive, there are two RCA audio jacks for connecting to an amp or amplified speakers, two 50-pin SCSI ports, and a manual SCSI ID selector. The Amiga machine in use with this CD-ROM drive is an Amiga 3000 030 16 MHz model running Amiga OS 3.1. It has Magic Workbench installed and is running a ZZ9000 real-time graphics card made in 2020 at 1024 x 768 via HDMI. A brand new 15-inch 4.3 LCD monitor with 1024 x 768 native resolution Guys, the screen is so sharp, it's ridiculous. It also has 256 megabytes via a big RAM card, eight megabytes onboard RAM on the motherboard, two megabytes of chip, and a 512 megabyte SCSI to SD hard drive. Next, to the software. As is often the case with Amigas, the software support is both awe-inspiring and a bit Wild West. It's awe-inspiring because so many people took it upon themselves to simply create public domain freeware and shareware 
for the benefit of the entire Amiga community. But it's also Wild West because there's no simple path to take on how to easily get from A to Z with a lot of this stuff. It typically requires a lot of research and experimentation. Back in the day, pre-internet, I imagine it could have been really challenging, especially if you weren't a member of a local user group, to get some of this stuff up and running. Thankfully, we now have decades of Eminet.net software. The first step software-wise was to get CD file system support installed, which is not there by default and is partly why Amiga fell behind PC and Mac and ultimately died. There's a legitimate reason LucasArts didn't port an enhanced version of Fate of Atlantis to Amiga on CD-ROM, and that fact haunts me to this day. But that's a topic for another time. I went with Ami CD-ROM version 1.5. Ami CD-ROM is a CD-ROM disk filing system for the Commodore Amiga. It supports the ISO 9660 standard and the Macintosh HFS format. That's right, you can read certain Macintosh data disks. The CD-ROM drive is mounted as a DOS device, for example, CD0 colon. Once that's installed, it's time to wade through the jungle of music players. The players I've tested so far include, believe it or not, Dopus 4.1, Eagle Player, Hippo Player, of course, our legendary old friend that works on any Amiga all the way back to OS 1.3, and Groovy Player. First, Dopus 4.1, the epic file management system for Amiga by GP Software. While I'm running OS 3.1 on this particular machine, I still prefer the older version of 4.1 over version 5 and Dopus actually works with mods, albeit one track at a time. You can use the default play button to start listening to a music file off the CD and hit it again to stop it. It's totally blind, but it works. There are probably plugins out there to enhance this experience and give you visual feedback, but this is how it works right out of the box, and frankly, it's kind of cool. Next up is Eagle Player, which had an update as recently as July 12th, 2020. This player could, and probably should, have its own separate review. It's so deep and vast. It's almost too much to deal with for me, as there are so many options to choose from, it's a bit overwhelming at first. But once it is set up, you can pretty much stop fiddling and just enjoy it. I like to use the skeuomorphic player called EMPY as it just looks so kick-ass and takes me back to the user interface music player designs from the late 90s big time. It supports more than 150 music formats, including most common sample formats, and it currently supports up to 64 custom programs. For example, amplifiers, user interfaces, analyzers, scopes, external deep hackers, list views, managers, and so on. It really is unbelievable. It also supports real-time graphics cards, which is an unexpected bonus for some. It can even access and decrunch most archive file formats and treat archive files like a directory. And finally, there's Groovy Player, which is made specifically for playing music CDs, and it is effing awesome. If you just want to listen to music CDs, this beautiful and simple player is the best option, in my opinion. It's just perfect. It can play any music CD without having to read pages of README docs. It's so simple, that's half the charm by itself. But it also has the potential to go really deep. The program comes with over 800 pre-written data files for album tiles and track info. But frankly, it probably won't know most of your own music collection, let's be honest. But no worries because you can type your own CD and track lists and save that data for the next time you insert your music CD. It's the absolute bomb for the OCD of us out there that really need to get rid of unknown CD on the GUI while you listen to music and do your other work. I've already started making a few of those CD data files myself.
In terms of data, I've started downloading Fred Fish ISO images from the Internet Archive like Goldfish and have been burning them to CDs. This is going to sound incredibly old school, but I've been doing this on a ThinkPad T60 running Windows XP using some excellent if ancient freeware called ImageBurn. It's so cool to have 250 Fred Fish disks with over 5,500 individual programs on a single CD-ROM to browse. And I much prefer reading through the vast treasure trove of software on my Amiga's monitors. And it doesn't touch my hard drive space, which I keep nice and tidy. And I much prefer reading through the vast treasure trove of software on my Amiga's monitor than some old, cold Google search result on a modern Mac or PC. I mean, I still do that sometimes, but it doesn't tickle the nostalgia bones the same way. You know what I mean? It feels right. The hardest part of all of this was the software journey. It helps to realize that some players are better suited or specific to mod music, while others are actually superior for audio CDs. There are even others that will take audio CDs and pass them through Paula, which creates their own unique sound and experience. But if you want to listen to a music CD, Groovy Player is hard to beat in my opinion. And for everything else, well, that's up to you. And the journey is often half the fun. I hope this video helps some of you out there avoid any frustration in your own vintage computing journey with CD drives and Amigas. And let me know what your favorite players are as I'm always looking to keep that knowledge flowing and adding to the Amiga love experience. Amiga love.